so two years essentially it's basically been just under two years since you this thing kind of really got going in the sense when you had your your i mean you you had talked about it for you know probably what two and a half years maybe a little even longer but two years ago yeah. when you had the the meeting with tnt that really kind of set the table to where this is all going and then you know it's basically almost a, another year before you actually debuted on television yep. what what like like what has surprised you about the business and what have you learned from a booking standpoint? What have you learned about putting together television um, from having to do television, looking at the ratings and looking at your talent base and things like that? What What are like the best, the biggest lessons that you've picked up in the last year and two years as far as the business of wrestling and the booking of wrestling? I think like I, I've been pretty open that like uh, it this year in 2020, I got a lot more what's the word I'm looking for I'm sorry uh, it's escaping me but I, I, I I've gotten a, I, comprehensive is not the word but it's it's uh, I, I've gotten a lot harder I'm a harder nut to crack than I was when this started about what I'm going to do on TV and I'm open to ideas I take a lot of ideas and I realized uh, that at some point I needed to come up with a lot more ideas of my own and and do them and just stick to them. And I had ideas and it was more big picture stuff. But uh, you know, as as it, as we went on, I, I think something that I found uh, about writing television that I still be I believe from the beginning. But I, if I ever doubted myself, I I doubled down on it when we got going. Is that wrestling fans want to see? great wrestling matches and there are times where like on i on the all-out go home show there probably wasn't enough wrestling but it worked i it was just enough to get away with but i came out like the day after the show and said like you know what like i feel like i got away with one and i'm gonna be honest with you guys like i, I would put more wrestling on the show i would do a better go home show next time so last night i felt really good because i thought the go home show for full gear was better than the go home show for all out i thought the show after all out was really good um, but I, and we followed up and we did over a million, uh, and in the overall and, you know, half million in the demo and it was a huge success, but, um, I, you know, I do believe wrestling fans love to watch wrestling and, and take the wrestling seriously. And I get pitched ideas all the time. Not, I'm not by my EVPs necessarily, but by like people around wrestlers and people around that aren't consistent with what I would do on TV that like make me that sometimes I'm like, you know, how, like, you know, who you're talking to, right. You know, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. And like, whether it involves like a screwy finish or, uh, you know, something that just doesn't have a lot of logical sense or, um, people operating behind, uh, the invisible camera that, that, uh, you know, is a phrase I've used so much now that it's like really a part of our daily life at AEW now, because I, I don't want people, you know, talking behind uh, the invisible camera and no explanation for why these people are having this conversation. So I, I guess my, my biggest thing, honestly, my biggest like lesson and takeaways than like sticking to my gun. Cause there's like stuff that I thought might not be good. And out of the stuff that if the, I feel like we batted a really, really high average and nobody's going to bat a thousand. Some of the ones where we struck out, maybe were the ones where, I had a bad feeling about him going in. And so going into 2020, I promised myself I would really trust my instincts, trust myself more. And I haven't always been right about that stuff, but generally it's like if you have a bad feeling about something, you probably shouldn't do it. Yeah. And um, a good example of this was a story I told on my Unrestricted podcast with like Max and Chris. Chris had a bunch of great ideas, as he usually does uh, for those guys. And I think that just came out on another podcast today. So I apologize for repeating a story, but that Chris had the original idea for the dinner debonair was a dream sequence. And I was not going to do that. Um, I can't see how you do a dream sequence and, and take it seriously in the context of a wrestling show. Although on being the elite, that would be great. But um, what I, I did think that, you know, the character look, Chris Jericho and MJF are these really pompous, arrogant heels. I could see them setting this whole dinner up as a way for them to make a lavish musical production. And they're both, 
you know, MJF is a trained theater singer and Chris Jericho is a musician. It makes perfect sense, really, when you think about it. Now, the regret I have, like I also said earlier today, is that I probably would have done it in the ring if you could go back and do it again, because I think there would have it would have felt more like a natural wrestling segment. Because not as we all know, not everything in wrestling in a ring needs to be wrestling to be a wrestling segment. I think a wrestling wedding, for example, like the one that we're building up to with Kip and Penelope, is a, traditionally they've done great ratings and they're great segments that are wrestling segments without actually having a wrestling match in them. And I think that's probably the key. It was, I think if we'd made it feel a little bit closer to the, 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 the action, which generally one of my rules of the show is I like to keep things around the ring as much as possible. Um, and that probably would have helped. Hey, if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestling observer.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.